thank you, Céléon, for the introduction. Um, so I'm going to um, talk about the basics of the NeuroPixels hardware, but um, oh, my slides are first need to advance. So, okay. So why, first of all, why do we uh, want to use NeuroPixel probes? So um, many of the developments of the NeuroPixel probes really is about uh, hardware development. And the main thing is that uh, NeuroPixel uh, probes have high density and low impedance sites. Um, and the uh, signal is amplified and digitized at the base and the NeuroPixel uh, probes also have a very small uh, footprint, footprint overall which um, enables us to have a high yield and low, no low noise recordings. Um, so that's the main reason. Um, so when uh, in terms of the NeuroPixel um, setup parts, um, this is approximately how a NeuroPixel system looks like. So um, first of all, you obviously have a probe um, which is connected to a head stage, uh, which, for example, powers the probe, um, and that is connected um, to uh, um, uh, basically a computer interface through a wire. And so when you uh, choose a head stage and a wire, you basically, um, uh, it's quite obvious what you need to choose based on the probe and the, and the computer interface. So the main two things I'm going to talk about is uh, the probe options and uh, how to understand the probe and then the computer interface. So first, let's look at the probe. So here, uh, the main thing is uh, to understand a bit of the terminology, uh, because on each probe, there are uh, more than uh, 960 um, sites or uh, 960 or more uh, sites or electrodes or what we call also pixels. Um, but uh, each uh, pixel is connected to an acquisition channel and out of the uh, and we only have 384 acquisition channels. So basically, um, one channel can sample from uh, various electrodes, but only one electrode at a time. So, for example, you can see on this illustration that uh, this channel, uh, this uh, channel that I'm showing um, can be connected to this electrode. It could be also connected to this electrode and this electrode. But in this particular configuration, we can only connect it to um, this green electrode. So this results in uh, various sort of configuration settings that you can have on your NeuroPixel probe. But uh, importantly, you can't have all the possible combinations. So um, you need to understand a bit of how the electrode, uh, electrodes are connecting to the channel so that you can um, optimize uh, for um, how you uh, select your electrodes for your uh, targeted brain regions. Um, and so the file that you need to supply uh, to your um, acquisition software is this iMac readout table that will basically define how your channels uh, are connected to the electrodes in the particular recording that you are uh, performing. And so um, the uh, main difference between the probe options that uh, sort of Matteo already allude, uh, alluded to is uh, this electrode anatomy. So at the moment, commercially, you can buy these four types of electrodes. So the 1.0 version, the 2.0 version, and the ultra and the non-human primate version. And so um, uh, across these um, sort of uh, rodent versions uh, of the probe, uh, the main difference is uh, what you can see uh, from this uh, ultra paper is this um, electrode uh, arrangement. So in the 1.0, it's, for example, staggered, then there is a bigger spacing, so you can cover a longer part of the shank with uh, 380 channels and in the 2.0 it's uh, smaller and in the ultra uh, each site is uh, even smaller but uh, you can uh, sample the sample the um, uh, sample more densely and so when you select a probe you uh, obviously uh, for example if you have a primate uh, you only have one option uh, that you need to think about but you also need to think about the anatomy so how far uh, the brain regions that you are targeting uh, are from each other, or how big area you need to span. Um, this is also a particular option for the 2.0 probe when you, um, on top of this uh, different uh, channel arrangement, you have four shanks. And so you can uh, select either a vertical or a horizontal arrangement. Um, and also uh, you can think about the neuron types, especially if you sample um, sort of uh, low amplitude uh, neurons, then you might consider this ultra version. The other consideration is uh, probably the weight, uh, and in particular, the 2.0 probes have been uh, basically developed for a uh, low rate, more chronic recordings, which are um, the probes itself are lower rate, and uh, you can, uh, instead of just uh, 
one head stage per probe you can uh, plug two probes in uh, for each head stage which uh, lowers further the weight that your animal needs to carry and obviously another consideration is uh, your budget uh, so this is the cost that you can see for each type of probe um, so when you prepare the probe for usage, uh, um, I recommend that the first thing is to test the probes. So uh, first of all, when you handle the probes, it's uh, always advisable to use like anti-static equipment. And uh, typically what we do in the lab is uh, before we do anything is we run best tests, which uh, are available in Spike GLX, uh, which I think uh, uh, later it will be mentioned also how to run this. But uh, I think it's important that you, uh, before you manipulate, you test the probes. And then uh, you will uh, pr probably build uh, your probe setup, which is quite different for acute and chronic recordings. And there are plenty of options. Uh, I think, again, people will talk about later of how to do it. Uh, but I would uh, mention uh, two typical issues that you might uh, have, which is that the base can slightly be bending uh, uh, compared to the shank, which you can correct, uh, uh, for example, by uh, using like a um, uh, glues or uh, something like that that uh, is uh, we normally corrected by eye. Sometimes you also see a bit of debris on your probe which you can just uh, scrape away. Another important step is to sharpen your probe. So at the bottom you see an unsharpened probe and compared to it a sharpened probe. Uh, and this is not done by iMac but uh, normally uh, users uh, can sharpen the probe and we use this Narishiga micro grinder to sharpen the probe. Um, and in the interest of time, I won't go into uh, the steps, but uh, you can read uh, all of the steps in the slide. And finally, uh, the other thing that you will need to do to prepare the probe is to sort the, the reference and the ground. So the ground, uh, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, look back at Carolina Mora Lopez's uh, video uh, from previous NeuroPixel uh, courses to really understand the difference between the ground and the reference but the ground basically provides a reference point and the reference uh, instead is fed into the amplifier to cancel a common mode noise um, and so the ground is located on the left part uh, of the probe and the reference electrodes the external reference electrodes are on the right side of the probe uh, but you can also choose internal referencing and people normally either short the external reference to the ground uh, or uh, basically use the ground and the internal tip um, and uh, well, uh, normally, actually, we sort of uh, just look at uh, which one is better and uh, we select accordingly in terms of uh, decreasing the noise. Uh, here, in terms of soldering, I think the main advice is to don't solder at uh, constant high temperatures. So try to keep your uh, temperature low and uh, try to touch the probe very briefly. Uh, so the next thing I will briefly mention is the computer interface. Uh, where you have at the moment uh, three broad options, I think. Uh, this is the traditional uh, PXI system that uh, people have been using thus far, but at the moment uh, iMac has released a new system called the OneBox, which is uh, uh, significantly cheaper than the PXI system, and there is also the uh, OpenEFIS Onyx system, which is a uh, which is more integral. Uh, it can integrate uh, better with like mini scopes and other recording devices. Um, but so uh, if you already have NeuroPixel in your lab, this is probably the PXI system that you have. So um, I'm going to uh, briefly explain how it works. If uh, Actually, I don't have that much time, so I won't go too much into it. And at the moment, it's anyway replaced by this one, one box system. But the main thing is that you have an acquisition card that you plug in into a, a national instrument a box that connects to your computer. And uh, probably the most important uh, part of the acquisition uh, card in terms of hardware is the syncing channel, uh, because uh, you might have a bunch of other data streams like camera and wheel that you might want to sync, uh, want to sync your um, uh, data to. And uh, this is possible with this SMA connector sync, uh, that, uh, through which you can sync. And we typically uh, uh, send random pulses uh, uh, through this channel and you can uh, read a bit more about the uh, data synchronization here but the point is that through this connector you can either send the triggered pulse to another DAC system or you can also receive an externally generated pulse for example from from an Arduino that you can then to send to another DAC system 